Welcome back everyone and this is going to be a slightly different video. This is going to be a lead up to our upcoming budget build video and just going to run for you a few of the components that I've chosen for this build that we actually already have but we're going to go through some of the components um, and we'll list them down in the video description down below so that you can kind of uh, build along when the video comes out if that's what you want to do or if you just want to watch the video when it comes out in a few days time or so. So let's get started. So the question that maybe comes to most people when they're new to building uh, any computer, whether it be a budget build system or a higher end system, is that which bit do you actually buy first? And then you, build, you purchase the other components around that first component that you bought. Well, um, it's a difficult question and it actually depends on the reasons that you're building the system. If it's, if it's for gaming, it may be that you buy the graphics card first, um, and then the CPU second, if it's for a lower end, which is what this video is going to be all about and what the upcoming one is all about, it's budget build, um, then it may be something else. So um, we're going to do this in no particular order. Uh, I mean, apart from the list that I have in front of me right now. So for first time builders, it's always a little bit difficult in that not only do you need to pick the components, do you need to know what you need for the computer. If you've never built one before, it can be really daunting. Um, but you also, which bit do you buy first? Do you get the case first? Do you buy the CPU first? What you'll find is if you don't buy it all in one go, if you're getting it over a, a longer period of time, like I am with my editing rig, I've purchased the motherboard for that months ago, months and months ago, never even used it. Um, still saving up for the CPU for that. So um, it can take a long time and a lot of things can change between that first purchase and the last purchase you need to complete your build. And things may change, new things may come out. You may change your mind, you wanna get something else, you're gonna to have to either send that back or you're gonna to have to uh, sell it on for a little less than what you paid. So you're gonna end up losing money. So it's always a good idea to kind of know where you're going with the build and try and save up the money first and then try and get it all together or as close together as you can with regards to the components. So the aim for this particular build is going to be budget, obviously. A budget can be anything. It could be £2,000 budget, it could be £200 budget, it could be £40 budget. Uh, in this particular video, this is kind of the entry level sort of home user that wants to possibly mostly do kind of home office type work with maybe the occasional game uh, thrown in for a bit of fun, you know? So let's run through some of the components that I picked for this build. Now I'm gonna start with the CPU. Uh, this bit was, this bit took me a while to, to pick. I wasn't sure which way I was gonna go. I was, I, well, I was. I was always gonna go AMD for this particular build, but I wasn't really sure whether I was gonna go Ryzen 3rd Gen, uh, Zen 2 or Zen Plus. Unfortunately, the budget didn't actually allow for the Ryzen 3000 series uh, CPUs. So we went with the Zen Plus architecture. So in this instance, we went for a Ryzen 3 2200G and we paid about 79 pounds for this one. So why did we pick the Ryzen 3 2200G? Well, quite simply, it had integrated graphics on it, which is what we wanted for this budget build. Um, as I said already, this is gonna be home office with an occasional gaming. So this is gonna fit the bill very nicely. Next, we got the motherboard and we went with the ASRock B450M Pro 4-F motherboard. This is a micro ATX motherboard. Again, this was around the 70 pound mark as well. Um, this is quite a fully featured board for the price for sort of lower end budget range uh, motherboards. And this one, I didn't realize this, but it came Ryzen 3000 series uh, ready. So, which means you can drop in a new CPU from AMD, the 3000 series, um, without having to do a BIOS update. Very nice. So you can expect the usual things on this motherboard. You've got dual M.2 uh, SSD slots there, NVMe slots that is, uh, USB type C. Um, the VRMs on this isn't totally amazing, but we're not gonna be overclocking the nuts out of this CPU anyway. So it's not really an issue for us in this build. That said, 
it's not the worst out there, so you can't go wrong. Obviously, it supports the polychrome RGB um, ecosystem from ASRock there, and you've got audio and you've got support for triple monitor as well. And with the triple monitor, you get a DVI-D port on it, a VGI, a VGI, a DVI-D port on it, you've got a VGA port on it, you've got HDMI, it doesn't say which version of HDMI that is, you've got a USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C, that's a bit of a tongue twister, you've got four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports on there, and two USB 2.0 ports there for older devices. And amazingly, they still put the old style PS2 type uh, keyboard and mouse connections on there, in case you have an old keyboard. I really think that's a thing that should be removed to make use for something more useful, like, oh, I don't know, Wi-Fi. You get a gigabit LAN port on there from Realtek, and also your usual audio connections on the back panel IO. So next we move on to RAM and we went with the tried and tested Corsair Vengeance LPX, low profile memory that is, and we've got 16 gig, so that's four four gig sticks, and that is two 400 megahertz, uh, the reason we went with the lower RAM is one, mainly because the price. Uh, you would not believe the deal I got for this. Um, so this came in at around £29. Um, the day after I bought this, the price went up to about 90 So, So I think maybe there was a pricing error on the website where we brought this from. I don't know, but for whatever reason, we got a good deal on this. Anyway, I'll put a link in the description down below where you can buy this. The price up here will show the price that we paid. Unfortunately, the price that you pay now will be more. XPG, this is the SX6000 Pro, and as you can see there, it's a 256 gig NVMe drive, and that is gonna be for our OS. So this cost us about 33 pounds, and I'll link in the description where you can buy yours. Now, moving along, we've got the OS drive there, and we also need some storage capacity as well, because a 256 gigabyte drive isn't really enough to uh, put things on. So um, other than the OS and a couple of programs and things like that. So we went with a mechanical drive for this main storage and we went with a two terabyte Seagate Barracuda. This is the compute version, but it'll be just fine. It doesn't mean you can't use it because it says compute. Uh, so ignore that. It does have more cash than a standard drive. Um, this one was about 50 pounds. And as I alluded to earlier, possibly, uh, we are going to be using Wi-Fi because the ASRock Pro 4F motherboard doesn't come with built-in Wi-Fi on this particular model. So we had to go for a cheap version of a Wi-Fi card. And this is a PCIe uh, Wi-Fi card, obviously, and not a USB version. So this is an internal one. This is only a wireless M. We didn't go for a wireless AC um, because again, this is home office, it's gonna be fine. This is up to 300 megabytes per second uh, transfer rate anyway, which is still not quite as fast as a wire connection, obviously, but for browsing and productivity tasks, it's gonna be just fine. This was real cheap, this cost us about 12 pound. So powering all this budget goodness is a power supply, obviously, and we went with Again, probably a little bit overkill for this system. Uh, we went with the Be Quiet Pure 11 power supply. This is a 400 watt power supply. Yes, that does sound quite low, um, but bear in mind this is not primarily a gaming system. This is a home office system. So actually 400 watt is going to be way overkill for this type of system. Even if they dropped a graphics card in there, a uh, lower end graphics card mind, then this would still be fine. This is, however, a gold rated 80 plus power supply. So it's going to be super efficient for this budget build. Always good to uh, spend a little bit extra on the power supply. So we're going to need to put this in a case, aren't we? So we went with obviously a micro ATX type case. Um, this cost us about 22 pounds. Again, all the links will be down in the description down below. This is a dual chamber case that takes a full ATX power supply, which is why we went with that particular Pure Base 11 power supply. It's a full ATX case, non-modular power supply. Uh, we don't need modular, it's fine. We've got enough room in here to hide the extra cables, and you'll see that in the next video when we actually do the build. This is a really nice case, actually, inside it is anyway. As I said to in our video of this one, go and check that out. I'll put a card up the top there. 
and the link down below where you can go and check that out before we uh, build into it that they could have done the front a li little bit better I, I would have liked to have seen a bit more airflow in the front but if you're um, budget orientated then maybe that isn't going to be an issue I mean this isn't going to get amazingly hot for what it's going to be used for anyway so it's not going to be a major problem for us so as you can see here we went with the AVP Hyperion AV PEV33 uh, micro ATX Q case and this was as I've said 22 pounds so I know that cooling isn't really going to be an issue in this case there isn't going to be that much that's going to make it get really really hot um, the CPU fan and heatsink that comes with that CPU is going to be just fine um, but I like to put extra fans in anyway just in case you want to upgrade or add a graphics card or something else later on so we went again with be quiet and we went with the pure wings 2 series of fans now i've never actually used these before but i've been told they are extremely quiet hence the name be quiet uh, this is an 80 mil fan so i'm a bit dubious about how quiet that actually is going to be generally 80 mil fans are a little bit more audible than uh it's 120 mil variants there so uh, we'll see how that goes when we build but anyway this particular one is going to fit in the back it actually has space for three 80 mil fans um, i'll show that in the build as well uh, but two on the back and one on the front in the power supply uh, chamber so this fan cost me about eight pound so to get some airflow moving through the case because i like to get some airflow in there even though i know this isn't really going to get that hot but it, you know it prolongs the life of the system if you can bung a fan in there i know it's only one it does have space for two in this particular case we're only going to use one because as i said it's not going to get amazingly hot in there anyway so we went again with the pure wings two uh 120 mil version and again this one was about eight pound also now there was one other thing um we also bought some speakers to go with this case now these were extremely cheap they were a, a flash shell i think so i'm not really going to include these in the overall cost of this system but i just thought i'd show them anyway because they uh they look quite good the satellites look a little bit cheap so this is the hp speaker system 400 never used it before uh, it's got a nice quite weighty um sub there as well two little satellite speakers and that is about it as have a look and see what the output is on it so it's got a four watt down firing subwoofer down firing subwoofer would be actually quite good um that should sound quite nice actually three and a half mil aux input there for your uh computer obviously or any other device you want to plug into that so on the box it reckons it can do up to 13 watts and that doesn't sound a lot but if you're in a small room actually that's going to be plenty of noise now again i don't know what the quality of the sound is going to be like on this but we can test that when we do the build video and this was actually about 20 pounds so that wraps up pretty much everything the total cost was around 436 pounds um, the price may be slightly different on the side there because prices may have changed since i purchased these and i will put the current prices um, but as you can see you can get a budget orientated home office slash gaming uh, computer here but this does give you a good sort of starting ground to upgrade later on anyway that's it and thank you very much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you like this type of video we may do more in the future do them separately parts list and then the build video it seems to work quite well for others but we're going to try it here as well anyway don't forget to support us using the links down below in the video description and guys we'll see you in the next one